Yeah, ho. <laughs> you know who it is. It's your favorite in the word, and welcome back. It's time for another fantasy file, and this time, the subject matter is Neon O'Jones. It'll be the third installment of his series, and it's going to be a juicy one. So, get ready. You know, grab whatever you need. It's going to be a good listen. It begins. It was everything I needed. Mad essential. And I was excited the entire time. Everglow was in town. Performing at every concert ever. A tour through all of the continents. And they were the only act we needed. Neano was with me. And so was everyone else. But I think we were the loudest men in that crowd. Probably the oldest too, in the front row jumping up and down as the six ladies enchanted the stadium with their essence. But it was already enchanted with grilling at my place. Had everyone's mouths watering over brown sugar burgers. Well full for enjoying the concert that just ended. Enlightened to the max as Niano glowed perfectly in the last pic I took of him. It was Doreen la di da as it was ending to go into Untouchable. Forever caught that moment in time as the look on his face transitioned from a piece to that's my shit. We've been singing Untouchable incorrectly for the past few days. We were in the front, singing it incorrectly again as we tried to match the non-existent choreography too. Then we became a K-pop group of our own with the four girls that were on our sides. All six of us were singing uncontrollably and rocking out when it was time to. Then it was over. But we stayed in that center spot while everyone left the stadium, proudly making out because we had tons of glitter on our faces and our beards, laying on tons more matching. Eardrums ringing, brains still convulsing, bodies throbbing, muscles pulsing over a good maybe 13 minutes. There were still tons of people trying to leave the stadium, so we just flew, hand in hand, just flying up to the roof slowly to find one of the roof doors. Right before we were about to fly out of downtown Charlotte, he landed and took me down with him. A word? Got out my hand to his hard on to let me know we can't just go yet. I was on my knees. He was inside of me. I was giving my all. He was getting throat. He took out a cigar as he spread his arms over the edge, leaned back and pushed slowly as I garbed slowly, savory slobbing tongue with my hand door knobbing slowly, slightly bigger than the burgers from earlier but a whole meal I wasn't denying myself. For the sixty ways he enjoys girl group galore with me and even attending with me, had him grunting to having to put the cigar between his fingers and grab my head with the free hand. He started holding back but going forward, pulling back just to see my face in the dim darkness. A huge gust of wind came from behind him, blew out his cigar too, as he unloaded past my face. I got out the way so he could keep shooting. He shot nine huge times. Nine huge gusts of wind came from behind him. He didn't take his eyes off of mine as I stood up looking into his. He put his still throbbing manhood away and zipped up hella so slowly. Grabbed my hand and we took off again. He wanted to get me home so he could return a favor without anyone having to see us. We were just about to hop in my bed, nude, but a ringtone I have never heard hit the air. He dead ass stopped. His entire demeanor stopped. He was going to get more than a biscuit, but his face of pleasure, lust, and desire turned into bothered. Didn't even answer the phone. Told me that was an emergency he has been painfully waiting for. Then told me he'd be back as soon as possible to get what's owed to him. You, in my throat, with my all every way you want it. Oh, he wanted it all right. I gave him a real long kiss that was going to make him take his clothes back off. He had to stop the seven kiss of deepness by letting go of my right cheek and my lower back. So he could handle whatever just screwed the remainder of our night up. After he puts his boots on. I kissed his forehead and told him I'd be ready for their head later. We chuckled. Then he hurries to zoom off into the air to get the whatever he needed. 
Had to celebrate living by myself that night, but it was all in ultimate pleasure. I had enough ass shaking videos he has procured to enjoy on my own. There were many, more than I can count on my hands and in different places. One to remind me of Toyomi Express by being on a roof. Even took the video in mid-flight to make sure I saw where he was about to land. One in that place we visited in Ohio on a road trip. One during a time he went camping. Glorious view of him showing off from a long view right into the tent. One on top of a fire truck that looked as if the driver was happily eating while in Wendy's. Oh yeah, he was real bold for that one. One in a dressing room somewhere, just jiggling that meaty ass in some very crisp light. One in a motor bay he works in, reminding me of the time we swallowed each other in there. The best thing about that one was the diagonal angle where the sunlight from outside was hitting him just right. On top of the light that was shining down on him, just throwing it every which way for a good five minutes. I was thinking... I need to go into this folder more often. My head was where it needed to be under these sudden circumstances. Then I suddenly was vapor. Blew the heaven up and everything shut down on its own while the mess I made dried up by the time I came to again. Then it was back to enjoying Everglow again. Then off to enjoy heaven of a sinful Sunday. Was hoping it would be sinful, but by the time 3 p.m. rolled around, I still hadn't heard from Nayano. He once told me if he disappeared for a long period of time, he is out on his thuggetry too. Me, being who I am, didn't follow that up with a question because he gave me a look like I need to mind my business. So I minded my business and went to where I go to the most, the Tristone era. Went to work Monday with my fingers crossed he hasn't been lost to the streets. Went to work still glowing though, and yes, my colleagues were all up in my business about it. Talking about I was glowing like I was a magical shuriken, and I cut through the air ever so manly every time I sit to walk somewhere. Zeta was still focused on the burgers I made Saturday night. Wouldn't let me get past the lobby without clocking me and handing over the cooler with the goods. Straight up bragging about going to Bohangles earlier because of what I said about them Saturday, when the conversation was on reminiscing about things nowadays that remind you of favorite times in our youth. I told everyone about how life was so innocent before hearing, you gotta risk it to get the biscuit. <laughs> if you know what movie that is from, you are an excellent person. But moving all the way on, there was no risking it back in the day because my mother took me and my little brother to Hardy's every Friday she got paid, treated us to whatever we wanted, and even then I felt the love. Even then, I understood you got to treat yourself every time you get your financial earnings. Whenever I make it to a place with the best biscuits, I return to happy times. As happy as I am nowadays, because I clutch the heaven and hell out of everything I experienced. It helped the new mounds of happiness I come across nowadays. Yet that entire time, Zita was just biding her time until lunch. Because her blast from the past was a recipe her mother created over berry pie. Her mother's Arabian flavor palette to bring some of her homeland into an American household. Had a lovely time getting all the ingredients so she can transport it to work as fresh as possible just to see the look on my face that Monday. I turned into a cartoon. Then all emotions sued to a pie that didn't taste American but definitely looked in. I thanked Zeta for existing again. She thanked me for existing again too even though it was peaceful in our neck of the woods. I bite it all the time I could before I texted him later that day, making up a rap because sometimes I'd be like a lyricist. Pulled up what's up so he could catch the vibe whenever he had time to, and so he could replay it for a lifetime. Yo, it's Drill Industries in the building. Whenever it's time for you to fill it, pedal skirt vroom and swerve to come get it. I'm going to do it from head to toe, mean it, my whole body like I'm diving in it. Now keep it rugged until you see me again, because I need for you to make it back in one piece. You were throwing your ass around as if I'd never catch it.
The next time when you get on all fours, you're going to catch this dick meat. Hooked from swimming in you like a river and slabbed across all of you like a full course. You go fucking get it. Then proceeded to go back to his videos for what seemed like weeks. Firstly, I want to thank him for sending me off for a couple of weeks. It's nice when a man takes the time to help me not forget about him. Working on my stories and enjoying the fragility of loneliness being lost upon generations and generations. Me? Not so much. As long as I have real life anchors that constantly remind me of a man with a good personality, I have no qualms. Because I know when you let something go, it'll find its way back. Secondly, absence does make the heart grow fonder. He takes like he's Diablo, chilling on a hammock and having no qualms with taking time to reply. There's nothing like not being left on red. There's nothing like getting full dissertations of how his day went without having a prior light. There's nothing like picking up a lost combo within combos because y'all both be texting too much. There's nothing like worrying if he took a bullet or not, and a cell or not, never coming back or never coming back. Always remembering that the last time you saw someone could be the last time you see them. So everything is as good as it lasts, satisfied regardless. I left the what else to collect dust. Thirdly, I have time to go collect new music, administer new ideas, drawing out new ideas, and making messes that don't have to be cleaned up. Between you and I, there was a recipe for disaster. Shaylia released high up, and that only reminded me of how much we've flown into the sky, getting higher, upwards, more every time we linked. At times, it's been a carnivorous tone six months. At times, he touched mental places I've forgotten about. That is more of a high than the physicals. Had me thinking he has to be more than just a well-tatted-up thug who works on cars. From the ways, he would teach me new things about wind powers as well as ancient powers. Learning from somebody who could access ancient magical wells had me twisting and turning throughout the skies in new speeds, withholding small pieces of information so he can't figure out that I'm a god was one thing. How he never felt confused by me withholding strategic information had him feeling like a real man. Prying on decisions with my powers will always prove what kind of being I really am. He never felt insecure about it, even though his ancient power tapping could probably already tell he was kissing a god. As we would create funnels in the sky, he always told me that there's something we gotta do and never knew when it would happen. Thought about that the entire first week of silence leading up to high up gracing my stereos the first Saturday. With all that circulating stronger on my membranes because of new music, I spent the next week fiddling through all of the levels of the Tristone era. How living fantasy is different than being a fantasy. Always switching it up when so many superpowers cause more conundrums. Cause the human mind is already complex without superpowers being brought into the fray. Then thinking about how so many homes have anti super being materials in them for heightened sexual situations. There should have been 2011 typhoons of a bedroom by now, but seeing and feeling those 2011 typhoons high up in the air is different. When wind as a power is formed, a lot of us wilders have millions of hands creating complex gusts that compound on one another when we guide energy. To massage a man while he massages me, unforgettable made it so i felt like i was being felt up by his testosterone filled hands all over my body and my throat at the same time whoever was in whomever when i mention hands around throats eyes will be locked and so will time fuck it all the way up until the last moan and pleasure blows out like a tornado suddenly stopping but with controlling wind your molecular pleasure field lengthens more past your body and fills up to being the vicinity you had your gust in. Imagine busting with hundreds of hands being connected to hundreds of other hands. Then gentle gusting will carry us to the ground below and have us hovering and massage winds until we come to again. 
an exquisite, half-second feeling of nothingness. A thorough balls were empty. Exhibits molecular pleasure that intensifies slightly more, as if chasing a dragon would never be that easy again. In turn, had me thinking about how powers could never be hazardous during lovemaking cause that's all I do. Create love out of nothing at all. Thinking of high heavens every time I write one cause rape culture is dead to me. Knowing good and well, one way sexual situations would lead to sexual serial killing. And who really wants to write another story about an ice queen instantly freezing off a man's member again? Not me, and I hope no one else. But let me not digress, because the sexual prowess of Imagination Land never needs to chase a dragon either. Now receive that, and let your mind wander the next time you catch that dragon. Then it was the second Friday of silence. Didn't feel anything bad was happening. Six sense is strong. Hope trained for the win. The day eventually turned into Freaky Friday. I've been enjoying weeks of fantasizing about walking in on him performing those videos. They were so long, it would give me a good five minutes of drooling and enjoying before I had to interrupt. It was only right I made a strong 25-minute video for him. It was splendid towards the end, and how he hit me up, then I hit the ceiling. It's been a long two weeks. At least I had you in my head. You good? Were the only words I registered before I blinked out while I blasted out. He stayed on the line as I huffed and puffed that orgasm away. When I was still busting, I told him through many breaths that he'll be seeing a video soon. So I stopped the recording to upload it while we talked about things and caught up real quick. I asked, what was he at? He told me he's at Monterey Beach and I should fly out. I asked, fly on. He said yes, and I'd have a ticket waiting for me that leaves in the morning. I should fly out, using a ticket, and I'll be taken to Monterey Beach once I land. I asked, word up? He answered with, yeah, I have you in my arms again instead of in my head. Be prepared to allow me to make up two weeks to you. I told him okay, and had to excuse myself to clean up the mess I made. Then told him when the video is processed, he can use that as the first makeup of all that time loss. He grown so good. I felt him in a very dense capacity, as if he was pressing up on me from all directions. My flesh thumped incredibly hard as the call ended, and I'm sure his did too, cause he was waiting on the visuals. Na 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 Hey, bon bon chocolate. Go up to the sky is all I could think of, cause it was a song I had on replay before I started masturbating for the guys. Grabbed a box of cocoa pebbles, and after I replenished my vessel, I pecked. I know what you're thinking. You know what I am. But why subject to traveling when I could just teleport? Well, regardless of that option, if you had a time, enjoy it. Enjoy it until you end up where you want to be so you can take the time to come up with some bullshit while traveling. That time, I didn't need to come up with anything. But I like making sure my inward feels wanted, desired, and all that. Then I started pulling up the Monterey Beach. Whatever was happening was big and had all kinds of hot air balloons on exhibit. Traffic in the sky got heavier the closer I got to the hotel. Then he finally explained to me that we would be up in the sky again. Our way. Two men with wind superpowers definitely means up we go. Already feeling special cause of the ticket, but what he was gearing to tell me made me feel more special. We were on our balcony. After getting my clothes off just to get me in a robe, had a bag of Reese's cups and two bottles of wine for the heaven of it. Once I started eating the candy, he told me that he is an FBI agent. My eyebrows went as high as the hot air balloons in the distance. Right then, Duck was more than an alias. So many things made sense throughout the explanation of him working for the FBI. So many, but before I digress the hell out of this situation, Nayeno's entire spell went like this. It's time you know who I am. I am Kang. Nayeno Kang of the FBI. Duck is more than just an alias. It's a lifestyle at this point, 
but if you ever felt like the gaps on our dating history were gaps, you are correct for feeling that way. You are never in harm's way, but my undercover persona is often used for the greater good. I want to tell you now, because that was the longest period I had to go without putting you in danger. I adore how you never pressure me to go out in public a lot, and I adore that you never pride. I want to tell you now because I believe you're worthy of the truth, as well as determining how we will progress as a couple. Even though this is a lie, you've always been psychologically sound with the shit we've talked about to the shit that never got clear explanations. I've never been as happy with any man in my presence until you came in my life and continued to come into my life. Whether it's to tend to the carnivorous side of our cravings, needing to kiss one another's forehead, company while breaking bread, figuring out whose aviators are whose, singing Everglow jams with me, how one of our favorite songs is Candace Pillay's Fall in Love. To be all the way honest, that was the moment I fell in love with you. Side digress. At that moment was when I fell in love with him. There was a four-month mark and he was sitting between my legs. Getting a shoulder and scalp massage. I knew something changed with us then, but the macho-ness of it all kept us keeping it silent. But in those three moments of a world-exploding track, I felt his flesh fill away. I've never felt a man's flesh. Then, he was peacefully silent that night. Slept silent, and we woke up with so much testosterone that was more than love. Back the way he was talking. That was one wild young Kapoor. <laughs> Let me stop. <laughs> I don't know why I wrote that. I'm sorry. But now... Now I have to tell you I love you and you need to know everything from here on out. This isn't a precursor to what I'm going to ask you, but will you fly across the ocean with me? All the way to Japan. When I ask you if I knew you would say no, so say yes so I can tell you why. I say yes while smushing around chocolate and peanut butter, but also having a peanut butter to my chocolate. Continue to serenade me with sweet everythings. Nino chuckles, then continues with, What this event is called is, What the ocean meets the sky. Once a year, all of us flight enabled super beings get together at Monterey, celebrate being able to fly naturally, and go on a safe flight across the Pacific Ocean, ending in Japan. Everything is paid for, and all I need is for you to keep up with the flight patterns. We still have some celebrating to do, but the elixirs will make sure we keep up with the planet's rotation while we zip throughout the air. We leave tomorrow at sunset and get to spend some time in Akinmushu National Park, camp for a night or two, then make our way back home. This will be my first time finally doing it with somebody. I can't tell you how much this means to me, but hopefully the candy, the wine, the festivities, the love making, and the elixirs will make up for it. I'm sure they would, but I've been wanting to ask him what kind of agent he is. When he told me undercover, all I could think of was, <laughs> He must like the low life persona because it's mad attractive and I have no qualms with him. Tatted up hardcore essence over a mind that hones in on criminals. Perfectly. I have to add because he be dead ass about it. His professionalism has kept him alive thus far. So he has to be perfect at what he does. So me being a G, dumbass I am, decided to ask him a question. <laughs> Laying all jokes and fetishes aside, you like being an undercover agent because you actually get to be who you want to be. Right? We both sat there in silence because it was a serious question. And before the silence occurred, he said something about not expecting that question. He had to get one of my Reese's cups and take a long swig of wine. At the end of him thinking before he spoke, I saw his eyebrows raise and he nodded. Then he said, right. In all inadequacities and directions, I really dig being a mechanic. Really dig getting tatted up. Really did going into the office every now and then to remind my colleagues that every low life isn't exactly low life. 
Some of those men are just products of a broken world. Others tend to do harm to others for their benefit. Those are the ones I enjoy targeting and taking down. That's when I really dig my license to kill. I need for you to never repeat those words to anyone. Because some of those women and men do not need to be incarcerated. Horror stories from air to air I've heard but what they do to keep their kids' innocence intact what have you rethinking what side of the justice system we should all be on. I saw a new man before me. His aura made perfect sense to me at that time. Those red eyes with golden rims made perfect sense to me at that time. He's so strong. He has to be to guard his blood. There are so many atrocities I never understand because I wouldn't vow to serve and protect peace. That made me think of someone saying that karma is a mirror. If you look at him, if you were to study him, you will see that karma has been on his side for a long time. No telling how many lives he has saved and I didn't even ask him that yet. Probably can't be calculated when it all boils down to it, but even if he has to take a life, it's never in vain because the way he talks about innocence, even before this conversation, had me enlightened. I asked him, what ruined your innocence? He laughed. I laughed. He poured a whole other glass of wine after downing what was left in his glass. Pulled out a blunt, took three puffs, then decided to tell me the story after I puffed three times too. I knew it was going to be some shit, but how he grew up so quickly around the tender age of 10 blew both of our minds right then. He went from taking the time to understand his mother's plight to having to witness child molestation, to taking down a molester, to losing his love for the pig skin, to being switched around in anger management, to losing the love he has for his father. From then on, he was high. Blood pressure, that is. So there's no mystery to why he wants to protect innocence. He says something along the lines of the circle of life and how his is shaped so that everyone better be wise what they allow in their circles. Or else. The way he put it had me looking at my circle of life and all of the right choices I've made thus far. They had me thankful I've always made the right decisions on how I judge other humans. Looking at him now, I can understand he made the same judgments to decrease the amount of drama he has in his life. Then we were looking at each other when one of our heads was in the other's crutch. We loved each other so hard during that dialogue that it had to end that way. Before we went to the beach to enjoy the final night's festivities, I had my chocolate, I had my highness, and I had him. He had his peanut butter, he had his highness, and he had me. Perfectly getting along. Perfectly partying, perfectly dozing off, perfectly meeting up in dreamland, and perfectly having our belongings sent to the receiving site. Now that involves magic, but it wasn't as magical as seeing the sunset. It looked like that towering, sunshine, seaside stage from Super Mario 3D World. Just like it. It was crazy how romantic it looked and how everyone kept it silent the entire hour before we blasted off to chase the sun across the horizon. We had one Mai Tai piece, and we nursed them like joy. You know that nurse. It was all good until it was time to blast off, though. The host of the festivities cleared the air to begin in, then asked for all new couples to step onto the giant glyph. I found it odd, but Nayeno quickly took my hand and we went walking through the crowds. When we finally got there, a woman put a necklace on us for the prosperity of our relationship. From now until then, then we ended up in the exact center of the glyph. Just great is what I thought, but he told me to not think too hard into it. And just get ready to spin a powerful flight until we know when to slow down. Once all of the new couples finally made it to the huge white glowing glyph, the countdown commenced. We joined in like everyone else, then we powered up to enter flight. Because we were bound by holding hands, when we both powered up, the white glowing energy of the glyph and some sand rose to the occasion until we blasted off into the air with the other hundreds of people. Flew across the Pacific, chasing the sunset that was carefully 1,000 miles per hour with us the entire time until we made it to Japan. That whole time, 
We zipped in different flight formations with different people, but with it being safely procured for hundreds of people, we all stayed flying the same speed, but could control our dissension and ascension. In my life, even though it's made entirely of magic, never have seen so much in one flight. Deep therapeutic breaths of the Pacific surrounded by glowing ambers to keep us in a straight line for five hours worth of time. It was the kind of magic everyone needed, feeling the wind sweep across every inch of your body while the ocean water glistens with the continuous sunset. A few minutes before it was all over, Nino was comfortable enough with gliding with his body facing the sky, reclined with his hands behind his head, simply admiring me while I spun around in utter happiness. I couldn't count what time it was that he was just staring, but that time I felt him. When I looked down at all of his ruggedness, he had a smirk on his face. I glided down to him to straddle him, wrap my legs around, then placed my hands on his pics before going down for a kiss. At that time, it felt forever. Now all of a sudden, I'm typing about it. To be honest, I felt what he felt at that time. Told me that up to that moment, it felt like I was just a figment of his imagination. So, I'm here to tell you, if a man is making you feel it, and you feel it too, don't change what you're doing for him. I hope he never changes towards you too. For the entirety of a perfect kiss during a perfect sunset, once you feel it, you'll never forget it. Now that a sense of foreverness has lingered over your membranes, I want you to reminisce on when you first heard Rosalia's De Aqua Nasalis. Now picture two men in a tent, facing the moon on a very moonlight bright night. The brightest, actually. It was like the Power Rangers looking up at Zordon. We were camping. Giant tent with a giant hole in it. Some dimmable LED lights and the moonlight adding to it. We both said, fuck it. Imagine two men with wind powers controlling a small space of wind to aim their phones. Aim them to film the both of us switch hitting, strong thrusting one another. Peaceful ripples and in the distance, flesh going in the flesh, then kissing on our knees while we both bust all over each other busting. No, we didn't drop the phones. You know what we dropped. Those golden red eyes were permanently anchored in my memories as I huffed and puffed. But it was about my heart beating so hard, it sounded just like that bass line. Then the wind sounded just like Rosalia.